Good evening. This is Marcia Krantz at the Weather Service in Milwaukee Sullivan, and we're going to talk about radar tonight for Weather Wednesday. You might look out your window and see a storm cloud. Do you ever wonder what does the meteorologist at the Weather Service see? Well, we are keeping our eye on the radar. So in this picture, let's say the radar is off to the right of the screen and the radar can see at the base of this storm. And what it's picking up on is the precipitation that is falling out of these clouds. And what we might see on radar here in the office is this light precipitation to the northwest of the radar. Now how does this work? The radar sends out electric, electromagnetic pulses and it bounces off the precipitation particles or even birds or insects and reflects back to the radar some of that energy. The particles reflected back go onto a map where we can see the radar reflectivity. The higher reflectivity is denoted by the brighter colors such as reds and purples and whites. The lighter reflectivity or light rain in this case shows up as green on the radar. It's important to check the color scale that you're looking at with whatever radar app you're looking with because the color scales may vary just a little bit. So when a radar scans, it starts at a base elevation and it does a complete circle. Then it tilts up just a little bit and does another circle. It tilts up more and does another circle around the base and then eventually when it gets done with the scanning pattern it will go back down to the base scan and start over again. There are various sampling patterns that the radar does. A few of them are shown here and so when you have a situation where there's really no rain on the radar the radar is in what we call clear air mode. So it spends more time, so it spins around slower, and it doesn't do as many elevation angles before returning down to the ground. And it's also in a more sensitive mode, and this picks up on maybe more bugs and dust. Now when precipitation develops, such as showers or snow showers, um, then the radar automatically flips into precipitation mode and it starts scanning just a little faster and a few higher elevation scans. And it can complete one cycle in five or six minutes. When we meteorologists see that the precipitation is getting a little bit heavier or we might be expecting some stronger thunderstorms, then we move the radar into a st what we call storm mode where it makes the radar turn a lot faster and it does a lot more elevation angles within its cycle. And what this will give us is a new cycle of images every four to five minutes, but with recent technology that's actually been cut in half or even less than that, where, we're, where the radar, we call it the sales mode, the radar can um, it starts at the base elevation, it does the first several cuts up, and then it goes back down to the base elevation and does its circle, then goes back to where it left off and does the top elevation scans, and then returns down to the base for the, the new cycle of elevation scans. And what we can do with this is it helps us see more of the base scans, the scans that are closest to the ground, closest to what is affecting everyone, and uh, it can even help us pick up on more weak, short-lived tornadoes. Now when all the radars from across the country are plotted onto one, one radar map, then we call this a radar mosaic. And for the Weather Service radar mosaic, it's showing every radar's lowest scan put onto one map. Now it's important when we're looking at radar images to loop 
about the last hour or so because it gives us a better idea of how the storms are moving and where the heaviest precipitation is falling and if it might be falling over the same place for a longer period of time. Uh, this particular loop is showing an example from a couple of years ago when Baraboo, Wisconsin had some flooding. You can see the heaviest precipitation fell over Baraboo, which is kind of in the middle of this radar here, over a fairly long period of time. And we can see this just by looping the radar. Now, I could go on all night to talk about radar, but um, we're going to break it up into a couple segments here. So please tune in next week when we talk about base versus composite reflectivity, show you some more radar examples, even precipitation and non-precipitation examples, and we get into what the Doppler velocity is. Thank you for tuning in.